Simple Cyber Defense Weekly Updates for October 9th, 2021. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about the Facebook outage, what could have caused it, and some ramifications resulting of it. And also touch on a little bit of how you could possibly protect yourself against similar attacks against you. As always, I'm Carl. Hi, this is Ahmad. And we're going to start getting into this Facebook outage thing because it's a very interesting topic. Many people have speculations and theories about it and and we're, we'll try not to get too much into like the conspiracy theory weeds but we're going to talk about exactly what we analyze and what we believe is the situation so i think was it october 4th that the outage happened yes five days yeah. ago. five days ago and so let's Let's start talking about what happened. So from, from an end user's perspective, right? You got, you got Facebook and it's, and it's sister sites, you know, Instagram, WhatsApp, all these, all these websites were out. You couldn't use them anymore. And that's pretty much it. So everybody's just waiting, you know, what happened? Could this be, uh, a cyber attack is this uh something as simple as uh, i know the server went down at uh, on uh, you know on their server form what happened yeah um and it's it's you know it's it's kind of strange because for a, for a company for a technology company that is a trillion That's dollar huge. company yeah. for something like that to happen it was it, it was mind-boggling you know i mean here here on our on our podcast we talk about, you know, it's, it's simple cyber, cyber defense. It's just for the average person, you and I. But then when you talk about a corporation, a technology corporation that is that big um, and they suffer an outage like this, it makes you wonder uh, what kind of, you know, first, what caused it? And if this was a cyber attack, how could, how could it happen to something this big with all those defenses, mm -hmm. you know, cyber defenses that are in place, which, which kind of like... Uh, uh, takes me. I don't know if you ever watch uh, Mr. Robot. That, that uh, the, the series. It's 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 uh, you know, it's on Amazon Prime. It's it's about yeah. this this hacker who uh, pretty much brings down the world economy by bringing down the most the biggest corporation in the in the world. Mm -hmm. It's called Evil Corp, right? Which reminds me of Amazon, honestly, not Facebook. But that's a different. Yeah. <laughs> for a different yeah. episode. Every large uh, corporation in the world is Evil right? Corp. And, <laughs> Yeah, and have you watched it, Carl? Have you seen I know I haven't. I haven't seen that. Or, okay, yeah, that show. I highly recommend it for you know for someone in in, in our field of uh, our field. It's 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 actually you know a lot of people think that what happens on that show is is uh, voodoo science, but it's not. When you yeah. sit there and you see the things that are happening and from social engineering all the way to you know you know uh, pushing payloads and writing scripts and mm -hmm. it's all it's all very normal. All very normal yeah, in once you world. have access to the computer the remote <clears throat> computers you pretty much have access to everything yeah and all and also how they get access to those computers yeah. it's it's mind-boggling how how simple and how intricate yeah. it can be yeah it just depends on the target and what uh barriers they put put in place because like there's right. a couple of times facebook got caught putting up passwords in plain text without any protection it's like what how did that happen right. how did that slip through the cracks you you were you were mentioning that um that there as part of this attack there was uh a, a 1.5 billion user information leak from from the yeah. from the system as well yeah um apparently around the same time there was roughly 1.5 billion worldwide facebook user data that was put on the sale in the dark web and these ranges from 
names, email addresses, locations, gender, phone numbers, user IDs. It's basically everything you'd need to basically become that person and who knows what, like put out a whole bunch of credit card debt on them or, you know, if they're a big enough celebrity, probably influence some people to do certain things. Like if this, if this could be used also in uh, politics too. I know some, certain countries could have political leaders that are up for elections. And if you can impersonate, you know, someone and make them look bad so that they vote for the other person, there's a whole bunch of different scenarios where this could play out. And since it's worldwide, it's not just affecting the U.S. It's affecting everyone in the world who uses Facebook. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it was. It was a global outage. It was a global yeah. outage. And and uh, and the the, the trend, You know, the uh, exfiltration of data was definitely global as well. Yeah. Especially with so millions, <laughs> billions of billions, people's data. Yeah, billions. billions yeah. Almost. Everyone who uses Facebook's data has been taken. Yeah. Um, so now a lot of things happened this, this week for Facebook, right? As you know, we got the outage, we got the data leak. We also had the, uh, the whistleblower on, yeah. on 60 Minutes. Um, just kind of like to, to summarize before we talk about, you know, the, the, what happened to, to summarize what the whistleblower said is that they said that Facebook knowingly the, changed the algorithm of the website of how uh, data or how, how uh, data feeds are shown to their users. And those data feeds kind of uh, push those specific users into a certain bubble and those bubbles kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger until they explode, get out of control, and they cause things like what happened in the, the capital insurgency. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of like to, in, in layman terms, it's it kind of what you see on your Facebook feed is different than what I see on my Facebook feed, is different than what he sees on their, yeah. you know, their Facebook feed. And it's all based on an algorithm that Facebook makes to kind of create a digital persona of their users and they kind of push notifications and push news whether without authenticating the news uh or you know and they cause those types of problems whether on a global level or on a you know on a, on a or political level or even on a personal level like what, what the whistleblower said was that you know facebook knows that their product and the product of their subsidiaries affect especially teenage girls or younger even to the point of them you know getting bullied enough or or have a bad enough self image that they they commit suicide yeah right and facebook didn't even do anything about that and it's not just that is that they would push even more of that type of algorithm knowingly towards it just to get more clicks right and as as we know if you're getting a service that is free then you are the product right yep. that's that, that's that's it and what facebook does is they collect all that data and they push it to their third-party advertisers you gotta you got mm -hmm. something as simple as your donut shop down the street and you're looking up a recipe on google uh, how to make croissants and then they're able to pull that data from your browser upload it into your algorithm you know and like oh this person now they, they want to know how they want they want to buy donuts but we can show them how to make or they want to they want to know how to make croissants but the shop down the street that donut shop down the street they can sell you those croissants hey how about you come and you buy this that's just on mm -hmm. a very very simplified way of doing it right yeah. um yeah i mean that's that's and that's and then that donut shop pays facebook for the clicks that you click so, on their ad or the impressions you just looking at their ads etc so you are a money maker for facebook yeah um and the, the 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 second thing is why wouldn't a company of that size put some certain type of protections especially for the younger audience to protect against things like this knowingly 
and knowing that things like that happen because they have departments within Facebook, yet they're very overworked departments that, you know, that research things like that. And the, 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 another thing that she, she said was, if you want to know what will happen two years from now in a certain part of the world, whether it was like some type of, some type of coup or some type of uh, unrest or a war or whatever, see what's trending now on Facebook. And that's what we'll, we'll show you what will happen two years in the future. Why? Because if you look as far back, if you look in Facebook's history, as far back as you can, you know, you want to see it. It's like it says ongoing joke. Hey, look, look two years back and see what happened two years later in that, in yeah. that specific part of the world. Um, so it's, it's a very big issue, you know, and it's not some, it's, it, you know, Facebook and the like are here to stay as far as, you know, in our lifetime, right? And our children's lifetime. So what can we do to protect our children from this, this hidden evil, I, I would say, you know, just, just, be just if if we guard their eyes and we guard their ears and we guard the amount and the type of information that they are consuming online this this as a parent is my first line of defense yeah right i really so, think for example social say, media hey, <clears throat> i was gonna say yeah, go i personally think social media should not be allowed for anyone under the age of 18 just for this very reason because we've known how manipulative the algorithm can get and push in certain things like body image or certain products to sell to them you know it's just unreal because <clears throat> i remember one study where they did they looked through a whole bunch of facebook likes just the likes that's all and they had a 90 percent prediction of what things that they would buy only purely on the amount of things that they liked wow yeah <laughs> and that is pretty scary wow yeah imagine that's just from the likes that's without yeah. even you know no other personal all that information data, yep. no other personal like, data, you know, just the stuff you like right i mean it, it's even it, the the have it down to the point where these they see how long you're you're looking at a certain image or a certain mm -hmm. video even if you're just scrolling on your phone, oh, the the pause here for a part of a second, and it's, this thing, these you know, these calculations are not done by humans. They're all done by you know very complicated computers, computers you yeah. know, very advanced algorithms, and it's just just that's what Facebook is here to do. That's their business model. You know, I'm not I'm not knocking on their business model. What I'm doing is I'm I want to see how can I protect myself and my children from the harness because there is a lot of good you know when Facebook <clears throat> started oh yeah I was I was still in college when I when I was in college you had to have I don't know if if, if you remember this or not Carl but you had to have a dot edu yep email address in to order be to able sign to in there Facebook, yep. and you had to get, have an invitation from someone mm -hmm. right and then after that it just it exploded and now everybody has it and yeah you're right I mean I agree with you if we if, you have to be 18 to be in college, at least here in the United States, right? Unless yeah. you're super smart. But regardless, and then you'll have a .edu email address. And why can't why can't we do that now? You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's you know. So it's, if we can't, then I, you know, there there are other things that we can do, um, which kind of which which is a a good segue to our next point, which is. Let's kind of talk a little bit about Facebook's explanation of the outage, which is the DNS problem, DNS, DNS configuration problem. And then, mm -hmm. Carl, if you can get in a little bit deeper about what can what is DNS and how can we use it? How can we leverage it to protect the content that enters our devices and our homes? All right. All right. So, all right. Um... So one explanation that Facebook has given out is they had a misconfiguration in their uh, DNS servers, which is stands for domain name server. What that basically does is computers don't understand human speak. They just under understand numbers, a string of numbers. And when the internet was developed, they realized that people kind of are bad at numbers. So 
So instead of requiring everyone to use an IP address like 192.168. to get to Facebook, they would have a domain name, facebook.com. And then in the DNS records, it would be basically like a list of domain names that point to a certain IP address. So then when your browser hits facebook.com, the computer reaches out to the DNS server and say, okay, where is facebook.com? And the domain name or server would be like, okay, DN or facebook.com is at 192.168. And then the computer will go to that IP address to get to the content that it needs. Now, the problem that Facebook had, or at least what they have told everyone, is that somehow those DNS records got changed to something else so that to a a domain or to an IP address that doesn't exist so that every time you'd go to it, it would just say service not available, service not available. Now the question is, how did that happen? Facebook is not really saying how it happened. It could have been an intern that made a mistake. It could have been a hacker that purposely changed things around so that they wouldn't have any interruptions when they're stealing information. Any number of things could have happened. It, since Facebook isn't intern, really right? saying, yeah, it, it's always that darn intern that's just <laughs> getting paid peanuts. But if at all, it, it, yeah, it's hard to say because again, Facebook didn't say anything. All they said was, "Yeah, our, our DNS server or name change has changed, but we fixed everything, so it's all good." Um, so. That's their explanation. So again, now we get into the, the how could you leverage this to protect yourself? So every time that you use DNS servers, you like every time you use a website, facebook.com, microsoft.com, google.com, doesn't matter which website you go to, you always have to use a DNS server in order to get that domain name readable by humans into an IP address for the computer to understand, okay, this is where it is. This, the best way I could think of it is probably think of like DNS servers are kind of like the post office. And each house is a separate computer system. And each house has a, a address to it. Except instead of the readable human address, they have just a string of numbers. So what the post office will do, have a list so that the post carriers can know, okay, Bob's address is 10165 whatever, so that the post carrier will know, okay, I can deliver this message from Bob's computer to Alice's computer by getting the instructions from the post office say go from 192 one da, 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 to 193 da, 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 da. and without that translation the post off the postal worker would just go around not know where to go and just give up eventually say yeah, i can't find it and just send back a message say hey, sorry i can't find it and um, there are some tools out there that you could use to help protect yourself against malicious act actors who put up websites that purposely try to trick you into downloading malware and that's uh, open DNS and with this tool you could have your own little mini free DNS server where if you go to a website that that's malicious and no it's known malicious um, the open DNS will have a list of all these malicious addresses and will purposely block them so that your computer can't get to it. Even if you accidentally click on a link that goes to that, it will just tell the postcard, no, nope, that address is no good. Go back. Don't send it. Don't retrieve anything from it. It's no good. It's pretty simple to install and they have a lot of good documentation and how to configure different devices like routers, personal computers, smartphones, and all that. Um, 
if there's enough interest, we could actually create a video tutorial on how to set up a DNS for your home network. And anything else you want to add to this topic before we move on? Um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, just another another thing about DNS. I mean, open DNS is one option, uh, but if it's something as simple as you can, and like you said, Carl, we can make a, a tutorial about this. Um, so a, a DNS, like you said, is a router. You know, say, okay, I'm, I'll go to this website. When you when you type in a web address in your browser, it will go to that DNS server after it checks your um, your your yeah. uh, host file, you know, in, on your computer. Um, and if it, nothing in there matches, it'll go and it'll grab that, that IP address for you. Well, I can change that address for the DNS server. So the DNS server has an IP address. I can simply change the IP. So if you have somebody, something like Comcast, for example, um, <clears throat> you can't change it on, if you have like here, if you have uh, in California, at least if you have, uh, if you're gonna go the simple way and use uh, the Xfinity Comcast, they have a built-in DNS server that you can't change. And they do that for, for security reasons. So, you know, it can't be spoofed, et cetera. But if you use a VPN, you can choose to use a different DNS server on that VPN. And there's there's a lot of servers out there. It's not just one DNS server. There's a lot of servers yeah. out there. And the one I personally use is Family DNS. Why? Because it protects not just against websites that have malware, but it protect it will protect against websites that I don't want my children to even know they exist on the on the web, on the World Wide Web. Um, and one thing you can do is, you know, if you want to stop your kids from going to, if, if you allow them to go to, to social on social media, you can change the way that it routes to the IP address for something like Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Because anytime they try to, to, to go to that website, if you change it on their, on your DNS settings or on the host file, it can take them to any website that you, you can create your own little page says, hey, dad says no more, no more social media. Like, oh, what is this? Or you, or you, you they go to facebook.com and take them to their school's website or yeah. something like that. Right? So you can do things like that, which I, which I do to, to, to mess with my kids. They're not allowed <laughs> to go on social media to begin with, but if, yeah. you know, they do a lot of, sometimes they do like educational games and things like that. And they're all web-based, but they still, you know, I still, sometimes they get them off it that way. Um, so that's, you know, it's, it's very easy to do and we'll show you guys how to do it. It's very effective and I highly recommend it, especially in this, you know, if, if you're trying to, it's knowing what you know now, and if you haven't watched uh, the, the, the interview with 60 Minutes, please do. I mean, it's, it's, very, it's a very easy listen. It's not very technical, but it will be eye-opening because this information is out there. It's not, it, this is not voodoo yeah. science. It's, this is the truth. This is the reality that we live in. And then after you do the 60 Minutes interview, you can go to our interview with Avoid the Hack to yes. expand your knowledge on how we're being tracked and the reasons why we need to be a little bit more hesitant of using social media the way that we're using it now. Because, again, all this information is out there <clears throat> and companies are using it to make money. And like Ahmad said, if you're not paying for it, you are the product. Yeah. And, and, and Carl, you had shared a screenshot with me from uh, Facebook. They wanted you to verify information about yourself. What were they it was requesting? Instagram. It was Instagram. Oh, it was Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Uh, basically, the message that I got was, your account has been temporarily locked. We've detected suspicious activity on your Instagram account and have temporarily locked it for security precautions. It's likely that your account was compromised as a result of entering your password on a website designed to look like Instagram. This attack is known as phishing. Over the next few steps, we'll ask you to verify your identity and help secure your account and let you log back in. So, <clears throat> this was an actual message that I got when I opened up the Instagram app to look at some photos from friends in there. So, the message basically telling me that i entered my password into a phishing account into a phishing website is not right <laughs> because i've only used the app i've never used any web-based instagram at all 
So I think that this has to do with the data leak that happened with Facebook, which they're not really talking about all that much. And what they had me do was verify my email address. They sent me a link to that email address and I put in that one time link in a token string of numbers. And then after that, they gave me a text message to make sure that, okay, the email wasn't compromised. So again, another token and I put in a token and then because I had two factor on there, they also required me to put the two factor token in. And after all that, they forced me to change my password. So I just think this is very interesting. Instead of saying that it looks like your account been compromised, they're trying to blame it on me saying that I logged into a shady website when I didn't. <laughs> and now I'm being forced to change it to protect me instead of just owning up like, hey, a hacker just got your account. We don't know why. It's just interesting and funny at the same time. It's like, no, I did not put my account in a shady website because I only use the Instagram account or Instagram app, the official Instagram app. So if my credentials got stolen, it's because of you, Facebook, not because of me. Right. Yeah. So did you know about the data leak before you got that message? Yeah, I did. And I was kind okay. of, ex I wasn't expecting my account to be affected, but because I had the two factor in there, but I yeah. guess since everyone's been affected, I guess this is the time to go into all your social media accounts and just change passwords, put on two factor if you don't have it. And I'll probably even go as far as if you do have two factor, disable it and then re-enable it to get a new two factor code in there. Because if they stolen the two factor to the original token, then they could spoof all the the two factor tokens themselves because they have the secret keys that are used to generate these tokens. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um that's even if, even if those so I mean those tokens are all just one time passwords, right? Yeah. But the way they're created is the say for example Facebook Facebook and your app will communicate to each other in creating what's known as a private key for each side. Mm. And then that private key is then created into a complicated algorithm that brings out the tokens, the one-time tokens. And since they're both using the same algorithm, the tokens will both come out the same. And so that's that's where you switch the tokens back and forth publicly because it doesn't really matter because if you take the token, you won't have the session that you created because the session is only good between the two endpoints because you both have your private keys on each device. And so if a third person comes in and you come in at the same time with the same token, they'll be like, whoa, this isn't right. I shouldn't get two tokens. I should only get one because they only have a limited amount of time to get that token in before it becomes invalidated. They only have like 60 seconds. So it's pretty tight window and really hard to spoof at the same time like that. So, but if they do have their own private, if they do manage to steal the private key from Facebook, they can just sit back and wait for you to log in and then create their own token. And then they log in themselves in a different session. And then Facebook wouldn't know any better. Like, oh, you just change locations or change devices. Oh, I'll let you in. No problem. Because you have the token to verify that you are who you say you are. Okay. Cool. Yep. That's very informative, Coral. Thank you. Yeah. Like I said, it's very important to, to keep on track of these things because it's very easy for stuff to get stolen. Yeah. All right. So is there anything else you want to add to this episode before we no. sign off? All right. So this will conclude this episode, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.
If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.